Diseases occur when cells stop doing their jobs. This is especially problematic when the cells can't regenerate. Neurons, for example, in most parts of our brain no longer divide. We're stuck with what we had when we were infants. That's why we can't cure paralysis. When neurons die, our body doesn't have the ability to replace them. We could create new neurons from stem cells and provide them to patients with neurodegenerative diseases. But stem cells are hard to get, and whether or not to use embryonic stem cells is a complicated ethical question. What if we could take a skin cell from a patient and coax it to become a neuron? Skin cells are super available, and they have the same genetic material as other cells in the patient. Scientists have thought that once a cell matures, that it will always be that type of cell. However, discoveries in genomics have stimulated some new, exciting ideas. Work in the Eberwein and Kim laboratories at the University of Pennsylvania suggests that cells can be changed into different types of cells, even after they have matured by using information about which genes are turned on in a cell. Because there are tens of thousands of different genes, it would be impossible for a molecular biologist to do the number of experiments that would be required to identify which genes are responsible for making one cell a skin cell and another cell a neuron. We need a way to reduce the possibilities. A bioinformatician or a scientist who has expertise in both biology and computer science could take a genomics approach to the question. Remember, each cell has the same genome. Cells are different because they use different parts of the genome. Genes are regulated or turned on and off so that a particular healthy cell, whether it's a kidney, heart, skin, or brain cell, functions the way cells of that type are supposed to function. If we could find genes that are really important to make a neuron a neuron, maybe we could turn those on in a skin cell and turn that cell into a neuron. The first step is to generate a testable hypothesis, a question that we can test. A testable question is, are there genes that are expressed only in neurons and not in skin cells? I need to find gene expression data from skin cells and neurons to answer this question. Remember, when genes are expressed, it means that the DNA along a small part of the genome is transcribed into RNA, which is then translated into proteins. The proteins enact the instructions encoded in the genes in the human genome. So when scientists are talking about gene expression, they are interested in the RNA sequences that are found in a cell at a given time. These RNA sequences tell you what genes are turned on, which genes are about to give commands that will affect the cell's behavior. Often, when scientists run RNA sequencing experiments, they make their data available to other researchers for further use. Bioinformaticians often start looking for data that will be useful to answer their specific questions by searching public databases that contain previously measured RNA sequencing data. Great! We find RNA sequencing data that other scientists have collected from their experiments that measure gene expression in the brain and in the skin. However, the brain is made of many different kinds of cells. It would be even better if we had higher resolution measurements, measurements of gene expression in single skin cells and in neurons. Hannah works with a team of collaborators to generate new single cell RNA sequencing data on skin cells and neurons. Once they have this new data set, they need to identify what signals or patterns in these data would answer their question. Hannah starts with a thorough literature search to see what types of tools other scientists have developed and used for similar types of questions about gene expression in different cell types. She finds that there are a lot of computer-based tools available, but not one that does what her team wants. 
So she sets out with her programming and statistical skills to develop a program that will best let her answer her question of, are there genes that are expressed only in neurons and not in skin cells? The gene expression data, or RNA sequences from the skin cells and neurons, are in a file like a huge Excel spreadsheet. I'm writing a program to search through this really giant collection of data. My program will find the rows which are RNA sequences, where all the skin columns are zero and all the neuron columns are non-zero. Once Hannah has identified what RNA sequences were found in their neuron samples but not their skin cells, she uses statistics to make sure that the results from her program are likely to reflect real differences between gene expression in skin cells and neurons. Sometimes it can look like there are important differences between cell types when actually these differences were observed by chance and are not really the things that make these cell types different from each other. Hannah and her team's experiments result in the discovery of a list of 200 genes that were statistically interesting. This means that the differences in how these genes were expressed likely reflect real differences between the neurons and skin cells. These 200 genes were expressed in the neurons, but not in the skin cells. She wants to know what these genes do to help interpret their experimental results. What do these genes do? Are all of them equally important? If she wants to manipulate the gene regulation of these genes in live cells, are there ones that she should prioritize as being the most important ones? After doing a database search using a publicly available database called GEO and visualizing the results with special representations that help us see the larger patterns in the results, we identified five genes that look particularly interesting in making neurons different from skin cells. We also checked the list for genes that contain a sequence motif. A sequence motif is a particular string of letters, like C-A-A-T-T-G, in the genome that's related to the function of a gene. In our experiment, we look for a sequence motif that indicates regulation by a gene that's known to be critical in neurons. All five genes have this motif. We also found another 16 genes from our bigger list of 200 that also have this motif. We think all of these 21 genes are good candidates for neuron identity. Bioinformatics has allowed us to narrow the genes to study from thousands of possibilities to 21. Bioinformatics utilizes public big data, computer programming, and statistics to enable doing science in a new and a more efficient way.